If you were a Celt in Batanes, the Celts were a collection of tribes with origins in Central Europe that shared a similar language, religious beliefs, traditions, and culture. It's believed that the Celtic culture started to evolve as early as 1200 BC. The Celts spread throughout Western Europe, including Britain, Ireland, France, and Spain via migration. Stone Houses if you were a Celt in Batanes, the northernmost tip of the Philippines, you would feel right at home, seeing that they built stone houses with thatched roofs from locally sourced materials, the same way you built your own house in farmsteads and small cozy village communities. Stone houses, peculiar in a nation whose traditional Bahaykubo homes used all over the Philippine archipelago, are stilt houses made without the use of any stones at all. Scholars say Spanish colonizers brought these stone houses, but the Bahay na Bato introduced to most of the Philippine islands is distinctly different. Most of them use stone only for the first floor and wood for the succeeding floors, while natural materials were rarely used for roofing. A combination of Spanish, Chinese, and traditional Filipino architecture. The Celt in you would enjoy the cool breezes, the rains, the rolling green hills, a folding topography that enhances the feeling of geographic isolation. A location that would be exactly what a Celt would have chosen. A pastoral community, Celts raised cattle. But in the smaller scale of the Batanes Islands, racing goats makes more sense, with a 10-cow limit per family to avoid overgrazing. Hill Forts Celts were known to be hospitable and friendly, yet formidable warriors. If you were a Celt in Batanes, you would be happy to know that they had maintained the tradition of building hill forts, the ultimate defensive weapon of European prehistory was the hill fort of the first millennium BC. The Celts built many hill forts from the late Bronze Age in Central and Western Europe. In Batanes, Philippines, these hill forts are called Ijang, man made elevated earthworks that follow the natural contour of the hills, becoming a fortified refuge with a defensive advantage for the settlement. Ijangs are ancient hilltop fortresses used by the Ivatans as dwelling places and centers of communal life. Taking advantage of the pre-existing topography, they were built, shaped, and fortified to fit the local population's purposes. It's hypothesized that in times of conflict, access to the Ijang would only be possible through a rope ladder that was lowered from above, thus ensuring a very defensible position. Archaeologists point to the presence of a considerable number of stones at the top as adding strength to this hypothesis because they might serve as ammunition to throw down on invading parties. Four Idang hill forts may be found dispersed in the major islands of Batanes. Archaeological excavation revealed that these man-made fortresses, protected by perpendicular cliffs, were ancient places of habitation uniquely present in the Philippines only in the Batanes region. The builders of the Idiangs were selective in choosing natural topographies to be utilized. They also made fantastic human modifications. Other Idiangs have stone pavements that could have led up to the homes. They modified the natural environment and created terraces to make it suitable for them to plant taro, gabi, and other root crops. Perforated Standing Stones Atop the Savidug Ijang, you see the perforated standing stones, and the Celt in you smiles at the romantic traditions maintained on these islands. Celtic lovers would put their hands through the stones as they exchanged vows. According to a local Irish historian, the hole in the stone is narrow on one side and wide on the other. The man had a bigger hand, and he put his hand through the wide side, and the woman put her hand through the narrow side. They made their promises when they put their hands through the stone. Photos 
of these standing stones may have been what prompted the archaeological work in Batanes, according to Dr. Eusebio Dizon, Deputy Director of the Archaeology Division of the National Museum. Lori found columnar stones with holes in them, and I was very curious to find out if these were archaeological potentials, Dr. Dizon recalls. From there, the Batanes Archaeological Project progressed, and a team of archaeologists, researchers, geologists, and illustrators found themselves amazed and intrigued with every new discovery. Ship-shaped stone graves. If you were a Celt in Batanes, your heart would swell with pride as you realize that even in death they maintained your ancestral burial custom of ship-shaped stone graves. Philippine archaeologists have found the arrangement of the stones is in the shape of a boat. In some of the larger graves, they even have bigger stones denoting the bow and the stern. There were no more than five distinct boat-shaped graves at that site, but since there were also some stones scattered about without discernible patterns, it might be that the area has been disturbed by earth movements or man-made acts throughout the centuries. What's curious about this is that the only other boat-shaped grave markers in the world are found on the other side of the globe. Construction of ship-shaped stone graves began in the late Bronze Age to Viking times. They have been found in Scandinavia, northern Germany, and the Baltic states. Few know that they have also been found by archaeologists in Batanes. It is apparent the archaeologists unearthed the remains of ancient boat builders and seafarers. Dizon and his team are tasked to piece together a cultural way of life and find answers to questions that continue to multiply. These ship-shaped stone graves serve as monuments to a sea-loving lifestyle of use to both the living and the dead. These could have been used for other rituals and activities related to maritime life, such as teaching of navigation and embark-disembark ceremonies. Ardent seafarers and boat builders, natives of Patanes, the Ivatan, had passed on their traditions through many generations. Boats A maritime Celtic culture of international travel and discovery may have gone back as far as the 3rd millennium BC when Celts in Spain sailed to the British Isles during the Bronze Age. The amazing craft Celts used are known to scholars today as the Ferry Bee Boats. The Ferry Bee Bronze Age boats are probably one of the most important finds in maritime archaeology. The technology and size of the boats has lead experts reevaluate Bronze Age society. The Ferry Bee Boats support the belief that man was capable of crossing oceans more than 4,000 years ago. If you were a Celt in Batanes, you would be glad to know they kept their boat building culture. Traditional Batanes boats are remarkably similar to the ferry bee boats in shape and form. The Tataya is an oar driven fishing boat without outrigger, Katig, designed to withstand the mighty currents when fishing. It can usually seat two to three persons. The Falua works the same way, but it is bigger and serves as a passenger boat that can seat 20 to 30 people. These boats are quite different from most traditional boats used in the Philippines that have a catig for stability and two pointed ends. Also, Ivatan and Itbayat boats are the only traditional boats in the Philippines that are not paddled but rowed. While Ivatans use oars and row facing backwards, all other Philippine boatmen use paddles facing the direction they are going to. The letter V. If you were a Celt in Batanes, you would probably not find it strange that the people of Batanes call themselves Ivatan. Their staple food, Uvi. Their protective wear, Vakul. Their port and more, Vanwa. One of their Ijangs, Savidug, extensively using the letter V in a country whose native alphabet does not even include that letter. Did Bronze Age Celts travel to the Philippines, 
building their stone houses and hill fort settlements, maintaining their romantic customs, burial, and shipbuilding traditions. The literal mountain of evidence seems to indicate this. Or should we continue to let what we have found remain mysteries and keep letting them tell us that it was simply not possible? Napoleon Bonaparte reminds us, though, impossible is a word to be found only in the dictionary of fools. Watch out for the series of videos on what appears to be Celtic artifacts found in the Philippines. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of our past in the hopes of a brighter future.